Hello guys and welcome back. So in the last section, we added or introduced Angular material inside our Angular CLI project. And we also added the checkbox that we see right here. Now there are, apart from this checkbox, there are some other components that can be used from Angular material. And we are going to use them in this um, video. So I'm gonna go to the radio button section and I'll just click on the API tab here. I'll copy this and uh, add it to the angular materials section right here and i'll also add this to the imports array like so as well as to the exports array like so now since we are already uh, since we have already imported the app material module here we should be able to do essentially use these two modules the mat radio module and the mat checkbox module. So I'm gonna go to the forms component section here and uh, I'll add this. Uh, let me just go to the home first and let's add a div with a class of container here. I'll cut this and inside here I'll paste it like so. And let's um, indent this a bit. Now inside an h3 tag again i'm gonna add a radio button text here and let's go to the overview section click on the view source and let's copy this markup right here let's paste it in here and save it and go back to the application so i see the radio buttons as well here if i click on uh, one of them then it gets or it works as expected like so. So this was it regarding radio buttons and apart from that um, there are some other um, options that are provided in here and the options can be again go, uh, go we, you, you guys can go through all these options in here uh, in the documentation. Then we have uh, sliders. So this is again something that we saw in um, here in the bootstrap like uh, in i'm not sure inside the progress bar it seems and then we have these sliders and other things like so but again all of these come as a part of uh, the pro package right and then we have some other things of that sort but then uh, this is completely free and that can be used so let's uh, see the slider toggle that we saw here in uh, in the input section. Uh, we have it, I think, here inside the range operator. We saw this that we uh, right now saw inside the slider. But we also have this toggle here, uh, which is a switch. That's what they call it. So this again comes as a part of the pro package here, but it is completely free here. So let's just use this one uh, slider or slide toggle it is. So I'm just going to add this H3 slide toggle and I'll add the markup for this just copy and paste. Let's save this, but I'll be getting an error right now. Um, Let's open this up and it would say that uh, Matt's slide toggle is not an angular component that it can uh, recognize. So that is because again, we need to add a module for this one as well. So I'll go to the app module section, sorry, uh, the app material module section and I'm going to add the import for that. I'll add the name of this module to the imports as well as the exports array like so and now i should be able to um, successfully make that work so we have the slider toggle as well now apart from that we have the slider that we saw here this one let's use that so i'm gonna again go to the api section copy the markup for this add the uh, mat module slider, mat slider module, sorry. And I'm gonna copy the name of this module right here and add it to the imports array as well as the exports array. 
and then finally I can go to the overview section go to the view source and just simply use it like so inside my form section so this is uh, h3 slider I'll add the markup for that let's save go back to the application and I should see a slider here as well like so all right uh, then again we have some other um, values as well or some other attributes as well for this match slider that can be used as well as the orientation and uh, other things of that sort so that all can be uh, can be seen inside the documentation so apart from that there are some other things as well like inside the buttons and indicators if i go to the progress bar section uh, we can use the progress bars as well which can be inter or indeterminate as well as for buffer and query so again i'm gonna go to the api section of it copy the name of this module that can be used and i'm simply going to copy the name of the module add it to the imports array as well as add it to the exports array and then i'm gonna go to the overview section and uh, then we have these uh, different types of progress bars so let's copy this one this is a determinate progress bar so i'll add it to the form section h3 or let's uh, use an h2 here first h2 uh, these are progress bars so this one right here is a determinate progress bar which has again a value property till which it would be um, it would be scrolled or it would be progressed okay let me just go back to the application here and i guess it was disconnected so let's just quickly reload this and i should now see the um the drop down or the progress bar here it's probably not visible maybe if i yeah maybe if i scroll it a bit then it would be visible like so right so we have the determinate progress bar here apart from that we also have um some other different types of progress bars like for this one which is an intermediate indeterminate progress bar uh, if I just simply copy this markup like so and just paste that here this is going to be indeterminate progress bar let's uh, see that in action and this is an indeterminate progress bar so it's just um, copy and paste here uh, nothing much apart from that we have the buffer as well which is of this type and then we have the query which again is of this type so this is query like so let's go back and we have these um, four different types of progress bars that we see here like so again let's zoom out a little bit and we see that work and then we also have progress spinners so again that uh, this thing that was a part of the pro package here in the progress bars comes as free in the angular bootstrap module or angular uh, material module so that can be used again so it's a progress spinner inside h2 progress spinners i'll add a progress oh sorry my bad i should first add it to the import array of the material module so i'll copy this class over here add it to the import array and then also add it to the export array like so and then i can essentially um, use the markup for this one and it's as simple as that so let's save this and see this in action so let's 
reload this and I should now see the progress panel as well. So this is how you can essentially use some other um, some other components that are provided by angular material here now i don't really have the time to uh, go through each and every one of them but essentially you get the idea right that you can simply uh, first add this uh, name to the import array of the module in which we want to use it or some other module from where we are exporting this module again which can again be used uh, like in our case where we created an app module added it all these uh, module classes to the imports array and then exported them right here so that we don't really populate the app module or pollute the app module and then uh, inside the app module we simply add the app material module to the imports array and then essentially use it so this was uh, i guess it regarding uh, angular material as well as uh, material design bootstrap now from the next video onwards we are going to talk about angular fire 2 so i'll see you guys in the next video bye